The plane making a 37 degree dive under the horizontal drops a projectile from an altitude of 730 meters. The projectile hits the ground after five seconds. What was the speed of the airplane? B. What was the horizontal distance traveled by the projectile? C. What was the vector projectile speed just before hitting the ground? Or just before it hit the ground? Cool. So, this is the situation here. We have our nice little airplane over here. And it's dropping its projectile. Go back to green on this. And then this projectile takes about five seconds. So, five seconds later, it hits the ground. Okay, so what's the idea? Well, if we look only at the projectile, and we can do that, and there's a 37 uh, degree angle with the horizontal just there. Okay, so let's do a little um, control volume, and our control volume is going to be only the projectile. So I'm just going to draw it as a, uh, as a square, and just put PR for projectile. Okay, so when it leaves the um, airplane, it has the same velocity as the airplane, right? And we know that, that velocity because the airplane was traveling diagonal, diagonally, I should say, on this 37 degree angle, then as soon as the 37, yeah, 37, as soon as it leaves the plane, the projectile has the same velocity as the plane. But then, as soon as that happens, what what happens is that now it's on free fall, right? It doesn't have the uh, the plane anymore. So the only force acting upon it is force of gravity, and because of that, the only acceleration it's going to um, feel is g. Okay, obviously disregarding the um, resistance of the air. Okay, and then we know that. So this is my vector v just here. Okay, and we know that we can decompose that vector into our horizontal vector, which we call Vox, and our vertical vector, which we call Vy. And since there's a 37 degree angle here, we can actually relate that even further because we know that sine of 37 degrees is to be equal to my Vy divided by my V naught, and the cosine of 37 degrees will be equal to my Vox divided by my V naught. Okay, cool. What else do we know? We know that the projectile hits the ground after five seconds, right? So if that's the case, then we can relate, and we know how much it, it, it falls, right? It falls at an altitude of 730 meters. So we can relate those information to actually find out what was the final speed that the projectile had when it hit the ground. Because note that the, the speed, and this is the crucial thing here, the speed on this direction here, on a horizontal direction, is just going to remain the same throughout the whole thing. Since we're not considering the resistance of the air, there's no forces trying to stop uh, this projectile from moving forward, right? Rightwards in our case here. And if that's the case, Newton's first law tells us that it's just going to keep moving forward forever, right? Obviously, in this case, until it hits the ground. And, and when it hits the ground, then we're going to have uh, friction stopping it from moving forward. The other one, however, this guy, however, there's an initial um, velocity, V naught y, but then it keeps accelerating because we have a force. It's pushing this guy down, so it's going to keep increasing the speed that it has as it's going downwards, right? Let's start just by doing, making sure that we're doing positives and negatives. So we could do positive and negative like so, okay? Or we can do our negatives do downwards as a positive, because after all, we know that all the vectors are going to be pointing downwards. So we can do that as well. So we can say, instead of this being the positive one, I can go ahead and do this one as my positive. That way, both my V not Y and my G are going to have positive signs, okay? So what do we know about the position of the projectile? We know that you know not plus you know, y t plus a t squared over two. Now this is going to describe the um, the position in the y direction at any given point according to time, right? Because over here we have the initial velocity, and how it's changing with time, and the acceleration that is being applied. And obviously this is only valid because our acceleration is a constant, right? So what do we have? What is our V O naught. So when time is zero, what's the altitude? 730 meters. What is the velocity? Original velocity? We don't know. That's what we're looking for, right? So let's just leave it as an unknown. T plus acceleration is gravity. T over two. Okay, and we know that again if our vector is if my y vector, let me get rid of these five seconds. If I'm considering a y, this is my baseline, right? So I'm considering this is this is my origin here. And if my y vector is a vector that leads from my origin from the ground all the way to where the projectile is, that's my y, then I know that when it first starts before any time, my y not will be 730, right? And I know that when my projectile eventually hits the ground at this point here, that I drew in green before, at this point here, my y vector will be zero, right? So it will be on the ground, so it will be on the origin, so that my y will be zero. So translating that into here, I can say that because I had the boundary condition that at t equals five seconds, y equals zero, I can translate that into the equation we just and we're just going to say 0 equals 730 um, plus 
v o y times 5 plus g times 5 squared over 2. And note that our only unknown in this equation is v not y. Right, so we can solve for v not y. v not y. And that will be um, 730 minus 121, 121, 121 meters per second. There's just one small detail, which is that we created, we determined that downwards wasn't positive, right? And if you remember, the y naught is going upwards. Okay, so the 730 that we drew before as the y naught has to be negative 730, right? Because it's going upwards instead of going downwards. So let's go back to where I put the 730, 730 over here. So we put in red so we don't forget. Okay, now it checks out. Okay, so we're going to have equating this 730 minus g25 over 2 equals by naught over 5, and therefore by naught is 121 meters per second. Okay, so this is the final, uh, sorry, the original velocity when the projectile detaches from the plane. But because we know there's a relationship between vy0 and v0, we can simply calculate v0, right? Remember that v y, the sine of 37 equals v0 y divided by v0. So therefore, if I want to find v0, I just need to divide the 121 by the sine of 37. And that's going to give me 201.89. We'll go ahead and round that up to 202 meters per second. So that's the original velocity of the plane, right? Because when the projectile detaches from the plane at the exact instant, the attachments from the plane, they have the same velocity, and that velocity is 202 meters per second. Okay, what is part B? So this is part A, yeah, part A. Part B, um, what is the horizontal distance traveled by the projectile? Well, that's easy, because when we talked about how the um, there's nothing stopping the movement on the x direction, so we know it's going to travel at the velocity at v not x for 5 seconds, right, which is the time it has to travel. So what is the distance traveled? What is the distance traveled? Um, our view on our v on x velocity is just how the position is changing with time, right? So therefore, v o x. Remember that v x is not changing with time whatsoever. So when I integrate from zero to five, five being the time that it stops traveling forward, it's my um, v o v not x stays as a constant and just leaves the integral. And here we're going to go from its original position to its final position. So I'm going to have uh, v o x times five multiplies my delta x, which is the distance traveled. And in this case here, my answer is just going to be v o x. Remember, v o x is just the sine of the cosine of 37 times my v naught, which is 202. So the distance traveled is about 806 meters. About 806 meters. Okay, so it travels 806 meters on the horizontal direction. Should have done this here too. Okay, cool. A and B done. C. What is the vector projectile speed just before it hits the ground? Okay, cool. So just before it hits the ground. So we know this guy is accelerating. Okay? We know that this is the original situation, right? And then we know that this guy is going to just stay constant throughout the whole thing, which is going to be the same cosine of 37 times the 202. But this guy will change as we go further and further closer, closer to the ground, right? So at the time that the thing touches the ground, we would have a vector that's something like this. Visually speaking, right? V y and V x. Okay. I'm not sure if it's going to be greater, but I know that it will increase. So if this is the original situation, then by the end of it, we have something like this, right? And the final, um, the final vector that we're being asked is a final vector for the projectile is going to be the combination of these two, right? So it's going to be this guy here. This is going to be the vector velocity for the projectile VP. Okay. So now let's this guy we know already because this didn't change. So all we need to do is find this guy so we can calculate what's, what's the uh, vector VP. Uh, okay, so part C, and let's switch back to blue. Part C, we're after that vector, so we want to know what is V, Y. And to do that, we can calculate using Torricelli's equation, if you want to, right? Because we know that Torricelli is going to tell us how much, um, can I do that by... DV. The acceleration is dv dt, so therefore, the acceleration dt equals dv. I can integrate 
a is not changing its gravity, it's always the same, I'm going from 0 to 5, and my velocity is going from v not y that we know already to my final v y that I don't know. So this integral is a from 5 to 0, so this times 5, and here I have v y squared minus v y squared divided by 2. Uh, acceleration is gravity, so we have gravity times 5, that equals my not that I want to know, minus what was our 121.5 here? 121.5 squared, the whole thing divided by 2. Cool. So now the only unknown that I have in this equation is y. I can take the square root and plug that and I get 100 in. 70. I'm doing 9.8 by the way on this one. 170.5 meters per second. That's the final velocity that we have on the y direction. So what does our v vector vp look like? What does the vp look like? Well, we're going to have a magnitude of 170.5 on the vertical direction, pointing downwards. And we're going to have a magnitude of 161, 2-ish, two 2 is fine, on the x-direction. Yeah, so indeed, the, um, the sky is greater now. But what we're interested in is not these individual fellows, we're interested in the combination of the two, the vector that I call vp for a projectile. And I can uh, find that using Pythagoras, right? So Pythagoras says that the, the magnitude of vp squared has to be equal to uh, 170.5 squared plus 161.2 squared. So my magnitude of vp is uh, 234.66. Okay, that's the magnitude of vp. But the answer is not quite this, right? Because the answer is asking us for the vector, not just the magnitude, for the whole thing. So what we need to say, we need to find out is what is the uh, angle that it makes with the horizontal. And we can do that quite easily because we know that's just going to be the, we know the tangent of that angle there that we're looking for is the 170.5 divided by the 161.2. So if we do the inverse of the tangent, the arc tangent, we can find what's the... Uh, what is the um, angle, right? So we find, find what is the angle that corresponds to a tangent of 170 over 1 minute 6, 1, 20. And that's 46.6 degrees, okay, with the horizontal. So there's two ways we can answer this. We can say the uh, vector VP has a magnitude of 300, 234 meters per second and makes a 46.6 uh, degree angle with the horizontal, like shown in the picture here. So that's one of the answers we can produce. Or there's another way we can say that, same thing, but another way to say that is can say the vector vp has a um, simplify things here without the uh, two integers 161 on the i direction and negative um, 200 and no, sorry 170 on the j direction meters per second okay so both both are the same answer just different format forms of answering it questions